you know, bands like, you know, Pavement or uh, Miracle Legion or uh, Super Chunk or um, The Replacements or any bands uh, that uh, kind of capture the, the rawness, you know, but also the kind of, like, emotion of, um, of life. Those are, those are the things that kept the show really, I think, sparkling. The show, I don't want to say cult following, but it gained a, a small but dedicated following over the years. Well, I shouldn't say small either, because frankly, I mean, everyone was watching it. But, I mean, you had people on from, uh, you know, Michael Stipe playing a ice cream man oh, to no. Hunter Thompson's only fictional appearance. <laughs> you know, the, the uh, Hunter Thompson, the Hunter Thompson appearance is actually apocryphal because he, uh, he actually never was in the show. There was an extra... I, my writing partner, Chris, a uh, co-creator, just informed me of this today. Like I, I thought I knew every bit of lore about the show, but uh, I had not known that uh, people are under the impression that Hunter Thompson was in the show. Chris explained to me that there is, was an extra, you know, just a guy in the background who happened to have that name. And I guess the rumor started, and uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that, in fact, we've had many fine cameos, but never had Hunter Thompson. Oh, well, we did have Hunter Never Thompson, mind, the just, interview's uh, not, not the Gonzo journalist, right? <laughs> some, uh, some other guy. But um, as far as Michael Stipe is concerned, uh, yeah, he kind of really opened the door. I mean, there's all these little kind of milestones of the show. That well, Iggy kind of Pop allowed... playing one of the dads. What's that? It wasn't Iggy Pop one of the fathers? Yeah, Iggy Pop. Yeah, I would, I would say uh, uh, Michael Stipe and, and Iggy Pop were the, the twin titans of our, of our cameo reel because, uh, you know, it's still... It's still hard to believe that that Iggy Pop was playing a suburban dad, but he was as as sweet as as, as you know the sweetest guy ever, and uh, you know he had a great time. Did they come the to you wanting put to put on the cardigan and, and rake in the yard? Right. Did they come to you wanting to do that? Um, typically, um, some I can't think of who. There were some people who did that, but usually, uh, well, Michael Stipe, for example, was a friend of uh, Catherine Diekman, who is uh, one of the. Uh, big part of the show's success. She directed all the specials in all the 60s and a lot of the uh, episodes, and she was kind of the uh, third part of the Pete and Pete team. She uh, knew Michael Stipe, and she knew Sid Straw, who was uh, one of our, I think, our earliest celebrity cameo was Sid Straw, and uh, she just kind of enticed them to, to do it. I think they wanted to work with her, and uh, you know, the show was starting to build a following, and so um, they joined on, and once Michael Stipe got on board, a lot of people wanted to do it. I mean, he was like uh, he's like the gold standard for like uh, you know indie cool. So once right. he did it, everyone figured, hey, we'll do it too. Did you model the town in which it took place off of any town that you knew or grew up in? Well, the uh, Chris and I both grew up in um, pretty um, scenic locales in upstate New York. I'm from Ithaca, New York, and Chris is from Auburn, and so it sort of represents. Um, a pretty uh, sunny, idyllic childhood that we both had uh, out, in, you know, kind of a small townish suburban locale. But um, the sort of mythical quality of, of Wellsville actually came from a song. Um, there was a, a great band from Kansas uh, that petered out in the early 80s called The Embarrassment, and they have an amazing song called Wellsville, and it just kind of captures what's great about living in a small town that's kind of off the side of the, of the road, and uh, we just kind of adopted it as our as our, you know, mythical hometown for the Peets. Where did you end up shooting the series? We shot in a bunch of locales in uh, in suburban New Jersey. What would happen, we would scout a place out. Um, I think we were in places like Lodi, New Jersey, and Cranston, New Jersey, and a few other, uh, I can't think of the other ones, but what would happen is we would uh, overstay our welcome in some way, and uh, they would not let us come back, and we'd have to find another place. But they... Uh, Yes, if you're if you're a real dedicated fan of the show, you'll you'll know that the house is different every year, and the neighborhood is a little bit different every year because. Mm. Uh, so now I, after, I don't know. It's just, it's, I think it's the big lights that are turned on at midnight to shoot the night scenes that make the neighbors a little bit annoyed. I I can't blame them. What yeah. uh, what do you now? So Pete and Pete got canceled in '96. Yeah, I think it, we made our last episode at the end of '95, and um, yeah, it ran. On Nickelodeon for a while after that, but we stopped making episodes uh, at the end of '95, I believe. Did it not just gain interest in the Nickelodeon head people anymore? Or what happened there? <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's a uh, it's a bone of contention, I suppose. I mean, we were prepared to make more the show. Um, you know, and on some level, it's amazing the show got on at all. And I have to thank Nickelodeon for having the faith to even make 39 episodes because it uh, was so different from anything else they had done. Definitely. And it it never did like. It did well. It was respectable, but it never was a hit show. 
Um, but at the same time, I, you know, we, Chris and I do uh, rue the decision they made to uh, not do more episodes because, uh, you know, we'd come up with Nickelodeon. We were diehard Nickelodeon guys, and we had made a show that, uh, you know, was pretty special. And when that third season was kind of coming to an end and we were hoping to, to hear about a pickup or at least some something that might take us into the a fourth season, um, I think everyone had just decided that, um, you know, the time had come to say goodbye. And I, I think it was a result of um, it just, you know, not being quite accessible enough. You know, it was just ultimately, I think, not uh, ever going to be quite as... I think they're looking for hits, and uh, I think they just did not think. Pe- I think look, if they had stuck with it and let the audience build, it could have been one of those shows that eventually got to that hit point. But I think after three seasons, they had just decided uh, you know, they're looking for the next Clarissa or something like that. Well, before I let you go, are there any anecdotes or unknown stories or unknown facts that we should know about the series? Well, uh, one of the one of the um, big mysteries of the show is. Um, what the second verse of the theme song is. I don't know if uh, if I can tell what it is, but uh, there's um, there's, a, there's a legend about that second verse, and uh, we've over the years we've um, heard so many different uh, ideas as to what it might be. Um, you know, the name of the song is Hey Sandy, and um, if you watch the opening credits, you'll sort of make out the first the first line, and then the second line is uh, well, it's. It's uh, forever going to be a mystery. I can't give away the the, uh, the lyrics oh. now, but if you if you slow it down and you pay attention and you really think about it, and if you're in the right frame of mind, I think it's almost like um, uh, you have to reach a certain level of of peak, peak consciousness. And when you reach that point, you'll understand. So everyone that should watch the DVD endlessly, reach that nirvana point, which only a few grandmasters. I've never even reached it, and you get there, the words will will kick in, and you will actually start to levitate. Be oh, great. Well, I'll be. I have a full night ahead of me then. Well, we'll yeah, I, I hope. I hope you lift off. It'll be yeah. great for you. You'll <laughs> you'll get to really. You know, a lot of people have, have wanted to do that. Maybe you'll be one of them. Oh, great. Well, I'll I'll get back to you if I do. Don't you worry. All right. Thanks. Will McRob, thank you so much for coming on Green Room Radio, and congratulations for the release of the first season of The Adventures of Pete and Pete on DVD. That's right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Rob. All right. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. We are having a great time here on Green Room. I'd like to thank Will McRobb for coming on the show, and a big special thank you to Kim Waldauer and Daniel Dorfman. And, of course, a big thank you, as always, to our webmaster, Mr. Dylan Heffler. Go to www.greenroomradio.com for new shows. And remember, we are now officially podcasting, so you can go to the website to get our RSS feed and punch that into your little podcasting program so you can subscribe to our show because we're so professional. (laughs) That's why you have me. Oh, boy. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.